Hola, Colombia. I'm going to start by teaching you a little thing that Adam Smith taught us a long time ago. Money is not wealth. Wealth is capital. Wealth is all the things that give value to society. Money is information. The reason we have Bitcoin is not so that we can have an asset that we hoodle. It is not so that you can have another form of speculative asset. It is not digital gold. I did not create Bitgold. I did not create eGold. I created electronic peer-to-peer -peer digital cash. Cash has to be used. It has to be spent. And here's the thing. To use money means you have to really decide what you're doing. You have to aim not just to consume, but to create wealth. And this is the whole point. Here in South America, you have an opportunity to grow. You have a better opportunity to catch up and have faster growth than North America, because they've already got certain things. The technologies already exist. You can grow faster than North America. And you can do this because money is information. And with Bitcoin, the way I envisioned it, it enables you to have information. Let's for a minute assume that you're a poor fisherman in the north on the coast up there. You come back with a harvest. Basically, you've gone out there, you've been fishing, you have lots of different types of fish, you have different shellfish, crustaceans, you want to sell them at the best market for the best price. You can do that now with Bitcoin. This is what peer information means. Rather than having a centralized marketplace, a middleman to sell your goods, you can now use information to search where you can sell. That small fisherman with a small load of fish can look, in a few years time, we'll have them being able to look on an app to see where the best market is. They will be able to then judge the cost of taking their ship to either side, different parts of the coast, to work out the fuel cost, to work out how much they'll get paid and know where to get to. To know that if they get to port A or port B, they will get different amounts of money. It may not be huge differences, but even 5, 10% makes a lot of difference. If you're a poor farmer and you have a crop, you will be able to sell it not doing shitcoin tokens, but by tokenizing your future crops so that you can sell them in advance, knowing that if there's bad weather, you will be covered. Knowing that you will be able to have premium crops covered. This happens now in America, in, North, in the USA. Farmers up there are large enough that they can sell hedging instruments that allow them to protect themselves so that no matter what happens with the weather, they're safe. But it's too small for small farmers here right now. Small farmers in Colombia cannot sell their product ahead of time effectively unless they get ripped off. We want to see a South America where people can sell everything they have for as much as they can so that their families can get education, so that their children can live better. I want to see that extra few percent so that people know where to go to get a little bit more, so that they can build wealth, not another ICO that does nothing, but to be able to sell their crops in a tokenized market. 
so that cocoa farmers, even the small ones, can come out around South American crops and sell to large American companies, large British companies, large Asian companies ahead of time, knowing that they have to meet certain quality standards because it'll be in a contract they have to meet, and knowing what they need to do, knowing what they can do to hedge so that they can go out there on real exchanges and sell their produce. And that will be the token. The token will be a future sale. That's what futures were. And in American markets, in places like Chicago, big American sales happen for grain. And that allows the American market to have an edge that the South American market doesn't. We want to change that. We want to bring every small producer the opportunity to have a peer interaction, to allow other people to invest in your crop. We want people to invest in your future harvest. We want people to invest as you're bringing in a lot of fish. Different restaurants can bid for them and you can get them there as quickly as possible. We want a peer market so that not a big Uber, but individuals can go out there not paying 50% of what they earn to Uber, but themselves here in this country can know, I can go to the coast, I can pick up these fish, I can deliver them to this restaurant and I will earn money not some big American company. That's the difference in my vision. That's what peer means. It doesn't mean everyone runs a node, because miners will compete to do that. That's what competition is. They will build a system that gets closer and closer to the minimal level of profit that allows them to operate. That's what happens with specialisation. You don't want to be a miner unless you have a lot of money to invest. Because like airlines, the profit margin in the future on these multi-billion dollar industries will be minuscule. You want to live your own life and have your own kids and your own family build a future. One where you can pay for information straight away. One where you don't need to be afraid of corruption. One where you can be safe. Because if you're not safe, and if you have to put up with corruption, you're not free. Forget all these stories about freedom by owning your own node. You're free because you're safe. You're free because your family's safe. You're free because you know that you're going to be okay tomorrow. I want to see apps where if you lose your phone, the last location or a picture can be taken and put on the blockchain. I want to see the serial number of all your electronic devices put on the blockchain. I want to see your property put on the blockchain. I want to see your car, the VIN number, put on the blockchain. I want a system so that neighbourhood watchers can post information about crime immutably on the blockchain. I want people to be able to report corrupt officials on the blockchain because I want a world that will be free, not for a bloody node, but because we can trust our future. Imagine if every one of you see something wrong and you can report it and no corrupt government can stop you. Imagine a world where you can post pseudonymously a picture of someone taking a bribe and it can go as immutable evidence into a court and that person can be prosecuted. Think what happens to corrupt societies when everyone sees what happens.
It's a world of sunshine. Sunshine is the best disinfectant. It cleans up all the corruption. When we have people able to start their own business, people able to protect their own property, other people able to help engage in protecting each other, we become better. It's not about a drug culture. It's not about a world that goes into selling anything, no matter what. It's a world where all of us can help all of us be better. That's what peer means. If you see something wrong, and you can pseudonymously report that, you help someone. If you see someone being mugged on a street and you can report it without getting in trouble yourself, you're better off. If you see a corrupt official and you can report him, you're better off. In a world where we can put out what I want to purchase and anyone can bid, everyone has a chance. It becomes a meritocracy. The best wins. If you can promise to deliver a certain type of crayfish to a certain restaurant at a certain time, and you can arrange a contract to do that, you win. Not because a large company has taken your product, but because you have engaged in trade. This is what decentralization is. It's not everyone running a node. It's us, the people. In the Federalist Papers, Hamilton and Mad Madison start a lot of things with a very simple phrase. We, the people. We, the people of this world, want freedom. We, the people of this world, want to trade. We, the people of this world, don't want to be oppressed. We want to have privacy. We, the people, want to be able to know that our children will be safe, that they won't be preyed on by drug dealers, that they won't be sold into people smuggling groups, and they won't be basically taken out of where they're meant to be. And this happens right now. This is a big thing that I used to work against years ago. A lot of people who want to work hard come from different places in South America right now and get lost. They get sold into sex slavery if they're young and pretty. They get sold basically working at zero wages in restaurants and cleaning and whatever else in America today. If these people had a way of immutably alerting their location that something's happened, that other people could basically say, I've found this person, that makes us freer. If people know because they have a contract before they go off and work that can provably show what they're doing, we're freer. If our sons and our daughters can go overseas, we're freer. If they come back because we know they're safe, we're freer. Not because we can have a drug market. We're not free because we sell drugs or pipe bombs or explosives or guns. That's not freedom. Freedom is safety. Freedom is privacy. Don't listen to the lies of the anarchists because anarchy is about control. It's always about control. In the Communist Manifesto, they have two things. One, law. You work within the system to change it so that you erode everything. Two, anarchy. Bring down the system and take control. We don't want that. I don't want that. I'm sure you don't want that. 
I want to see a South America that is free for too long. This continent has been oppressed hundreds of years. People have oppressed people here. They have used lies, they have used slavery, and it's time for all of us to say it ends. It's time for us to allow the smallholder to have a future. It's time for us to educate each other. It's time to us, for us, all of us, not to want to be the same, but to be a society where we accept people, no matter how different they are, where we don't shout them down as trolls, because we can now put a cost on doing that, but we allow people to communicate and talk, no matter how bad their ideas might seem. They have a right to say them. Because if we don't show what people are saying, if we don't do that, we're not going to be free. So what I want to see from everyone is very simple. I want people to start interacting, not because of Ubers. If you can develop an app that you think will be cool, that you think will be profitable, if you think will help people, do it. That's why we're having hackathons. That's why we're doing things. I don't want to see crypto kitties. I don't want to see useless things that are designed to make a quick buck. I want people to make something of value that creates wealth. Because wealth means that all of us get better off. It doesn't mean that we have a zero-sum exchange game where we win because we've crushed someone else. And that's what we're seeing in ICOs right now. I get money because I've outbid this guy. I don't want that. I don't know about you. I don't want to get rich by making other people poor. I want to see a world where I'm proud to see my kids live in. I want a world where we all trade, where we all engage, where we help one another. <laughs> this is what we're going to bring you with Bitcoin. This is my vision of freedom. It's one that will corrupt nothing except corruption. We're going to get rid of corrupt governments. We're going to let everyone have a voice, no matter how poor, how isolated, how anything. Everyone has a voice. I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if you don't like my vision. As long as you argue it properly, not by going and attacking, but by building something better. If you want to build something better and you want to compete with me, please do. I welcome it. If you can beat me, I'll be proud. Why? Because if you build a better system than I do, you've created a better world than I will. And I've succeeded anyway. Not because I have more money, because everyone's better. Everyone has a better chance. Everyone has a better future. So what I want people to start thinking about, and you don't need to be really technical to do this. Think about ideas, about how you can allow people to connect better. Think about ideas about how you can allow people to trade better. Every time you go down a street and you see someone in difficulty, think about if we did this type of app, we could make their life easier. Think about how we can incentivize people to help the elderly. Kids get a, maybe a little bit of money 
And if we have an immutable evidence trail, then we're not going to have to worry about trust so much because we can ensure that the people are protected, that evidence exists if anything goes wrong, which means it won't go wrong. If we can start protecting ourselves using technology, if we can show what's happening, then we can trust more. Imagine there are kids out there who want to earn money. I used to do things like mowing lawns and silly things like this. And I had to run around streets and give out flyers and it wasted half the time I could be earning. Imagine a little app for kids. Mow my lawn, I'll pay you this much SV. And the kid can go around and find out where the, pe the, the latest area to be mowed is, what lawn needs to be done, what tasks need to be done. That adds value. Instead of wasting our time running around getting nothing, that adds value. Again, think of the people on the fringes who we can help. Not by charity, not by government handouts, but by giving them opportunities. Think how we can actually make everyone's lives a little bit better not by handing something to them, but by giving them dignity. The reason things like the dole or welfare don't work is they have no dignity. If you're not working for money, if someone's handing you charity, even if the government's handing you charity, you have no dignity. Think how we can give people back their dignity. Think how we get a society where people want to be part of it, where they want to work harder, where they want to work to clean the streets, where they want to make everything better. That's my vision. That's what I hope to build. That's what I see as freedom. Thank you.